Our next speaker heads one of the most prestigious internationally acclaimed educational institutions of the country, the Nalanda University. This university is credited to be the only university in India to be managed by the Ministry of External Affairs and awarded the title of the International Institution of National Importance. We are honored to have between us the Vice Chancellor of Nalanda University, Professor Sunena Singh, has been entrusted with the noble task of rebuilding the ancient Nalanda University, largely because of her compelling leadership qualities of being an institution builder and her nuanced critical acumen as an educationist. Madam is a distinguished academician and administrator and holds the position of the Vice President and the, at the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. She is a member of the Governing Council Association of Indian Universities, AIU, a member of Comprehensive Language Policy of India, academic advisor of the National Cyber Safety and Security Standard, and a member of Board of Trustee of the Indian Foundation, a think tank. Professor Singh has played a dynamic role in streamlining the administration, reinvigorating the academic culture, and bringing about transparency and accountability into the system. We welcome you to the program, ma'am. Thank you for accepting our invitation and we welcome you with folded hands. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Menika ji, uh, honored Menika ji, uh, Dr. Janice Darbari, uh, Professor Neera Mishra, and a host of accomplished women who sit on uh, uh, the summit to exchange ideas, to bring to the fore what we can do for women of the future. Uh, well, I was uh, looking at the area, I was quite enthused to find that this is the second summit on women organized by we. Uh, my congratulations uh, and compliments to the organizers for putting together uh, such a holistic program, because when I look at the number of scholars speaking on different areas of expertise that need to be built over a period of time, and also the experts who have accomplished um, uh, several things, I think this itself is an empowerment of women. So congratulations to each and every one of us on uh, the International Women's Day, which the UN had declared in 19. 77. Uh, Menika ji uh, very stoically put that why do we need to get to eyes women uh, through International Women's Day? Uh, yes and no, uh, according to me. Uh, we should not get to eyes women because I think women have been on top of everything in India, particularly. We've had Vidushis uh, in, in our knowledge systems who actually question. Um, the entire knowledge system brought in the quotient of wisdom and uh, uh, harmony into the world. I think that, that that has been the role initially of women and they have not just been caregivers, they were knowledge givers. Um, you know, whether we take Saraswati as our uh, epitome or whether we take our Vidushis, the scholar women who have been there in uh, Vedas, uh, I, I begin from there. I think it's important that we do celebrate uh, women and celebrate. I agree with Menika ji, we need to celebrate them every day. But perhaps International Women's Day is also pegging at the psyche of men to take another look at women, you know, uh, to see what has been happening to women. Are women empowered or has the society uh, uh, you know, uh, been able to uplift the girl child, you know, it, it needs to begin from uh, the cultural ethos, it needs to begin from conditioning a girl child, because when you find a young girl full of confidence and self esteem, that's the contribution we make to women and then the world that it, it is at our feet. I think that's how it needs to be done. So before I begin to look at uh, what are the areas that we need to still focus on? Um, I must say that women have been breaking new ground. Uh, they've been, they have been able to bring neoteric, resourceful 
ideas to the world. And the more we involve and engage with women, I think the world would be a better place. So um, yeah, women, how do they navigate uh, through a fast changing future landscape is what I was looking at. And I have a couple of ideas here that I'm going to throw um, at my uh, young um, participants or upcoming leaders. Uh, I was looking at the UN announcement for the theme of International Women's Day for 2021. And if it, say, it says women in leadership for promoting women's full and effective participation and decision-making uh, in public life. You know, it also says, how do we empower women and girls? I think this is where it is important that that we learn to navigate, we learn to assert uh, ourselves with fortitude, with tenacity. What are some of the things that we need to uh, uh, do? And uh, one would be, uh, let us all learn to build our own utopias. You know, uh, let us all learn to be um, creators of our own destiny. Uh, uh, create a landscape where we define ourselves and keep redefining ourselves. So reinventing, recreating the self, being the change managers, not just for others, for oneself um, is very important. Um, uh, I think women or girls should embrace knowledge passionately because that there's no uh, uh, substitute no to knowledge. The more uh, empowered we feel, we feel it only through knowledge, the domain of knowledge. Uh, I also believe that role models are important uh, because we need to be aspirational. We need to look up to somebody. Uh, you know, there was a time when we said we do away with role models. We don't need them. But I think it's time also to look at women who have accomplished, uh, who have been standing on their own ground and uh, have the courage to say no, uh, that, that's very important. So also I feel women uh, should steer clear of uh, victim image. This is something that I feel very strongly about because we should be able to turn our struggles into triumph, triumphs. I think that that would be one way of uh, looking at life and also uh, how to stop complaining and ensure that there is progress. And uh, uh, this is very important because uh, every complaint need to, needs to be turned into a solution ideating uh, ethos. I think it's very important that we give back to the society the way we want it to give it to us. So believing in yourselves, it would also entail being change leaders. So, uh, uh, with these preliminary remarks, I was thinking, why don't we look at uh, what is it that women can achieve? What is it that women can accomplish and how? Because uh, the question how is very important because I believe increasingly uh, that the government needs to put more funding where it is required, where women are concerned. Are we training our women enough? Uh, is something that... that uh, uh, that's a question that I keep asking myself. As the world's rhythm is changing, be it pandemic or without the pandemic, the kind of challenges that we face, particularly the women as caregivers, um, I believe that women have the power to give the world the right beat. I think I, this is very important because uh, I've been in, uh, in the academic leadership role for over a decade now. Uh, I see a very gradual, slow process of change, but a certain process of change uh, in the society, in the education sector, or be it any other sector. Certainly there is progress, but I think we need to learn to do more than that. Now, we all would like to see how the government can invest itself uh, how the companies need to, the corporate sectors, the institutions, building a future uh, for women leaders is very important. How do we build tomorrow's leaders? 
So empowerment, engagement become essential at every level, right from the girl child level. So uh, the one of the thing that I was thinking about is the career trajectory. Uh, you know, th there needs to be, uh, perhaps it's there in some places, but not in many. Uh, structured, is there a structured onboarding process? Do we have the promotional avenues which are structured? You know, talent nurturing, onboarding process uh, for leadership in women. Um, are there career building measures, what I call career builders? Uh, for women, and I, I, I see a big no there. So there should be a well orchestrated system for mentorship, for training, for orientation, uh, to engage and uplift, uh, encourage the youngsters. Uh, the career trajectories can be built, I feel, uh, through workshops, through professional development training, build opportunities, uh, sponsorship, uh, building core values of diligence, uh, learning and dedication. Uh, this is very important, I thought. The other is the work life, the, the gray area of work life balance, because mothers have to navigate uh, through different set of responsibilities. Uh, women uh, give more of themselves, uh, uh, perhaps, uh, than, than men, so, uh, which leads to frustration at some level. Indira Nui at one point had claimed uh, in an interview that, I, and I quote her, she said, I don't think women can have it all. If they think so, they, they are pretending, that's what she said. And I believe somehow having it all uh, is not inclusive. What do we mean by having it all? It means having a great family and a great career. You know, you cannot have both very often. So what about, uh, what about single women? What about divorcees? What about uh, transgender women? Um, uh, you know, uh, various levels of women. What, what about them? You know, when we are talking about, are we, is, is the concept of having it all inclusive? I would say, no, it's, it is not. So uh, it's important that, uh, that we steer clear of society's unreal expectations from working women, you know? Um, uh, the society glorifies women in many, many ways. And uh, there is no glory in drudgery, if you ask me. So I think it's important that, that we steer clear from such kind of uh, definitions for women. And it's important that, uh, we, we, that we have, we nurture uh, women uh, to be confident in themselves and not to be apologetic. At, at what they have not been able to accomplish. We cannot expect a balanced world if we do not have this kind of a uh, trajectory. The other important thing I thought was problem, women as problem solvers. Uh, women are wired to be problem solvers. I, I think they have this uh, uh, capacity uh, to find ways uh, uh, to bring some kind of harmony, you know, how they solve the issues. I think, which is where the world, I think, even men uh, need to get feminine. And let me explain what I mean by that. I think uh, uh, with women driving the financial stability, I think more and more uh, uh, men would come into this domain uh, because uh, what do women have to give to the world? I think they give compassion, uh, they give empathy, the, uh, uh, the collaborative nature, uh, compassion. These are the characteristics of a feminine or, a, and I think men and men are getting more and more feminine thereby. I think it's important that they get there because if you want to be collaborative, you can learn that. 
you know that's a feminine characteristic according to me compassion tenacity empathy uh, the ability to take on anything and juggle with the resources and yet put right on the table something valuable that only a woman can do and i think men are learning to do that very quickly so they're losing we we no, no longer require the muscle there uh, for all this i think that that's a very important aspect to my mind uh, so we need to in other words educate men um, you know uh, at all levels about the potential of positives uh, potential of empathy and compassion uh, this is something that would uh, bring about uh, a world of change uh, in, in, in the sector of women empowerment. Uh, the other important thing I thought is how else do you bridge the gap, the gender gap? Um, one, as I have been saying, uh, we need to harness the full potential of women leaders, entrepreneurs, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, who can then pr promote innovation, uh, economic growth, social development, all this is possible through the steps that I have gone through. Uh, I, I must applaud Niti Aayog's uh, women entrepreneurship platform here, uh, which has been a catalyst for women in business, um, for women entrepreneurs or women in technology. Um, uh, fostering network. Uh, remember, in India, women uh, do not have adequate uh, uh, property ownership, for which they, you know they, the uh, the banks refuse to give them a loan to start a new venture. So most of the uh, business that women run, run are self-financed or patronized by the men at home. So I think this is something back home. This is something that that also needs to change and uh, gradually, but certainly I think that this is where we are going to go. So um, how do we, in order to empower, uh, I think it's important that we fight the cultural biases, uh, stereo stereotyping uh, needs to be uh, thrown in the dustbin, uh, not to be encouraged, uh, skepticism towards women, uh, also needs to be done away with. So I wonder where are the men in women summit? I think they, they need to be there to learn their lessons, to encourage women uh, to their, uh, not encourage, maybe that would be again patronizing, but uh, uh, learn uh, to see women as equal partners. I, I think that, that, that will ensure uh, uh, equal world landscape for women. Uh, these few words, I think it's important that uh, uh, women retain their identity and celebrate themselves at every stage. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Madam, we thank you for the blessings and the thought-provoking speech you gave us. We are indeed blessed to have got such an opportunity to hear to you. And the, the thoughts like uh, women are problem solvers, Stereotype images should be changed. A woman's stereotype image will be rightly changed by your innovating speech. We assure you that we are all new women of this new century and we will carry forward your ideas into the society and put it as seeds to germinate and generate into the society. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you to all, to the organizers. My best wishes. I, I, um, I, I need to exit. The, the couple of other things, but I'll off and on, I will be listening to everyone. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. giving me Thank this you. opportunity. Thank you.